Shane Team, everybody. Yay. 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 Am I uh, coming through okay? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming out. I'm James D. I'm one of the artists in the Things That Go Bump in the Night exhibition, which I'm sure you've heard about three or four times right now. Um, I wanted to thank Corey, although he seems to have taken off for coming up and doing speaking with me today. Um, I'm a little nervous, and I've had some coffee, so bear with me for a little bit um, while I get my, my sea legs back down here. Uh, first of all, some thank yous. Um, I'd like to thank Micah Bornstein for putting this together and inviting Corey and I to speak and share a bit more about our work than what you could normally get out of just looking at it on the wall. Uh, I'd like to thank John Kane and uh, the other staff at South Shore Arts um, for having basically giving us a venue to show this work. And I'd like to give special thanks out to Bridget Covert, who I Unfortunately, is on vacation, or maybe fortunately for her, but unfortunately for us, she's on vacation. Um, uh, she really did a lot of the heavy lifting on getting this show together um, and putting together what I think is a spectacular exhibition. Um, it's, it was, it's really nice to see a show where all the misfits have found a home. Yeah. That's, that's really about the best way I can sum this up. A lot of us, I have a feeling that you know, David and, and Corey probably get a, some, a little bit of pushback on our work and about, you know, why so dark, why so eerie, why so this, why so that. And it's nice to have a bit of understanding. Um, it's as valid or more valid as anything else, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we had a chance to show it in a, in a proper venue and, in, and give it its proper place. Um, I'm going to start this a little differently than, um, than normal than usual. Um, I'm not going to talk f directly about my work right off the bat. What I want to talk to you about is a theory of artistic interpretation that I've been working on for, for quite a while now. To, you know, this is what I do when I'm thinking about when I'm working in my studio and doing those tedious things like filling in the backgrounds and stuff and my mind wanders. And I often wonder about how the viewer interprets the work and how the artist, well, how those interpretations differ, how the artist makes it, what goes into it, and then what the viewer sees when they come to it. And my inspiration for this theory is, comes from a very odd place. In Einstein's theory of relativity. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't remember if it's the general or the specific, but um, E equals MC squared, everybody's seen it. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. What's interesting about the mathematical theory of, of the theory of relativity, or basically all mathematical theories, is that they contain a lot of information that is not readily apparent from the, from the formula itself. This didn't just come out of nowhere. There's a, there's a theoretical basis behind it. There's a set of computations behind it. And that kind of set of computations probably fills a book. Um, it's a very elegant, simple theory, but the basis of it is very, very complex and requires quite a bit of proof. Now, what's interesting about that is that it contains information, and it contains it in a way where somebody else who's properly trained in physics can take this formula and work backwards. And so here's the theory. So Einstein builds it all up distills it down into this theory, so all this information inside of it. Someone properly trained in physics could probably take that theory, build it all back down again, fill a book, and with very minor de deviations and variances, recreate the same thing. So how does that apply to art? Well, artists, when they make a piece of work, they build a piece up. You know, when I'm making a piece, the thing that goes into it is like my past experiences, uh, my training, my interests, my ideas, my interaction with the media, uh, like what I'm, what I'm using, if I'm painting or if I'm drawing. And it goes up, and the end product is the piece. So I, like Einstein, I built it up and put together a theory. It's not a traditional mathematical theory, it's a theory of art. What's interesting is that when a viewer comes along to it, when they unpack it, 
they're not going to see it the way I see it. They're going to bring it down their own way. There's going to be some overlap. There's going to be some ideas that we share in common. But the viewer is going to bring something to it that's from their experience and their encounters and what they think and what they read. So how does this mean in practice? I love Rembrandt, one of my favorite painters of all time. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is that it's a self-portrait. Now, of all things, the most hard to interpret are self-portraits. What the artist puts into it is very personal and very, very subjective. But still, we look at this and we get something out of it. So, you know, and I can describe to you a little bit about you know, what the circumstances were that this was made in. So Rembrandt was older, obviously. Um, he'd made and lost a fortune. Um, he looks like a little worse for wear. He's a little fat. Um, he's a little pushy in the face. Um, but he, uh, there, it, you can say something about it expressing his age and his, his personal circumstances. But I think when we look at it, we can pull something out about it, about our personal circumstances. And we'll never understand fully why he made it and what it means, but it can mean something for us. Now, a big difference between art and science is that art is subjective and science is objective. So that's the reason why the interpretation is subjective and why what goes into the piece and what comes out of it and interpretation is totally different. Or it's got overlap, but it has a lot, so many differences in it. They could be just described as a different thing. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that art is a science is skeptical. There's scientific skepticism. Art is not skeptical. Art is based on faith. The faith that you can communicate with somebody in a very vague set of of, uh, of artistic vocabulary and still communicate with somebody. It's actually very um, hopeful um, in that, and that it allows you to look at it and say, uh, my interpretation of this is valid. So what happens when you see a piece of art that you don't respond to? Chances are good that you don't have much overlap with the artist. Um, um, maybe you don't have the same experiences. Maybe you don't understand the, the way in which they're working. Um, living with art helps you understand it. So the more you live with art, the more you, you'll get out of it eventually. So now that I've described this idea about interpretation and this shared theory of art that we have when we, make, when we look at work, I'm going to describe a little bit about what my theory is. 